morning, 5th of January already, time's flying, you know, it'll be soon when Jesus comes. So let's look forward to that time of his coming. But in the meantime, we need to be faithful, we need to be trusting, we need to be faithful to his word and studying of his word. I just pray that God's blessing will be upon you as we study today. We're going to carry on with our uh, books in as of a, a book study of the prophets in the book of Isaiah today. And we're going to start from chapter 17 today. So how are you all? It's a nice day out there, but I don't know, I'm struggling a bit with a cold myself, you know, in my chest a bit. So I'm trying to stay home as much as I can at the moment. I mean, I'm still doing my church duties and Bible studies and meetings, but, you know, let's pray that uh, things will be better this year than they were last year. Let's pray that we will, as we wait upon the Lord, we will renew our strength and mount up as wings as eagles, Run and not be weary and walk and not faint. We also need to remember that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. That's a good way to start off, isn't it? Well, let's uh, have a moment now and we'll just pray and then we'll begin our study and our readings. You know, I love to go through the books of the prophets and the ministry of God because I think this message is not old. It may seem old to us, but it's yet ever new. There's an old song. It's old yet ever new. There's an old hymn. I used, we used to sing when I was a child, but I can't remember all the words of it. But it's old, but it's ever new. There's always something in the Word of God for us today. You know? and for our future. So let's come before him in prayer. Lord, I thank you that we can have another day where we can study your word, we can preach your gospel. Lord, I pray for the those who listen to this message today, that they would receive unction and anointing from your Holy Spirit, that you would stir them up in the gifts and the ministries you've called them to, and Lord, help them in whatever you've called them to do, Lord, to fulfil their callings and their ministries. Help us to be wise stewards of what you've given us so that we will invest it, we will develop it, we will work on the gifts and ministries you've called us to. Lord, we will not allow them to remain dormant anymore, because now we're in the day where the gifts need to be manifest. They need it, and I know it's your desire to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit to build up, to edify, to comfort and encourage your, your church, Lord, and also to bring many to know you. So I pray that you will help us as we study this word, Lord, that you would open it up, Lord, that you will help us to learn something precious, because we know there are also so many precious promises in your word, and you always fulfil your word. Lord, often sometimes we have to go through difficulties and trials and you have to test us to see if we are worthy or, you know, faithful before you pour out. But there's always that, uh, you know, desire of yours, Lord, for us to walk with you, to experience your presence, to have the restore the relationship that was lost at Adam, to have that intimacy with you. So I pray your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophecy against Syria. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks, which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day it shall come to pass, that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. And it shall be as when the harvestman gathereth the corn, and reapeth the years with his arm, and it shall be as he that gathereth years in the valley of Rephaim. Yet gleaning grapes shall be left in it, as the shaking of an olive tree, two or three berries in the top of the uttermost bough, four or five in the outermost fruitful branches, 
thereof saith the Lord of Israel. And that day shall a man look to his maker, and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And he shall not look to the altars, the work of his hands, neither shall respect shall respect that which his fingers has made, either the groves or the images. In that day shall his strong cities be as a forsaken bow, and an uppermost branch which they left because of the children of Israel, and there shall be desolation. Because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and hast not been mindful of the rock of thy strength, therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants, and shall see it with strange slips. In that day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish. But the harvest shall be a heap in the day of grief, of desperate sorrow. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise, like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing of nations, that make a rushing like the rushing of a mighty waters. The nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them, and they shall flee afar off and shalt be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind, like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And behold, an evening tro eventide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is a portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. <coughs> oh, excuse me. The northern kingdom and Syria made an alliance to fight against Assyria. But Tilgath Pilsner III captured Damascus, the capital of Syria, in 732 BC. And annexed the northern kingdom to the Assyrian Empire. Ahaz, king of Judah, then paid tribute to Tilgath Pilsner III when he visited the Assyrian king in Damascus. So, you know, they were out trying to do it again. They were trying to buy favours and pay tribute so that they wouldn't be attacked, but they were. They would be attacked. God's message to Damascus is that they will be completely destroyed. The Syrians had turned from the God who could save them, depending instead on their idols, and their own strength. See, we warned to only put our trust in God, not to put our trust or confidence in any other thing, only in God, completely. You can put your trust in anything else that will let you down and fail. Especially if you've made it yourself, you can't put your trust in that and pray to it and talk to it, because it's never going to answer you, you know. But God will always answer when we turn to him, and we ask him to come and speak to us and minister to us. He always does. God who could save them. Instead of that, they turned to their idols and their own strength. They put their trust in what they could do, not in what God could do. No matter how successful they were, God's judgment was sure. Often we depend on the trappings of success. Yeah, so expensive cars, pastimes, clothes, homes to give us a fulfilment, but they don't satisfy, don't they? You know, you fancy this nice item of clothes, it could be whatever, it could be for a man, it could be a nice suit or whatever. But once you've worn it a couple of times, you're fed up of it, you know? And women will know the same thing. Some women tend to, they'll buy a nice dress or they buy something nice to outfit, and they'll wear it once and that's it, they'll sit in the wardrobe for the rest of it forever, or until they give it away to a charity shop. You know, you know, so it doesn't last, does it? You know, the feeling doesn't last. You get forget, forget. You get comfortable with things. And then you forget, it's like the same with God. When God does something for you, you know, we forget then. We get so comfortable with that blessing that we forget who gave it to us. We forget to praise him and thank him for the, for whatever we've got. Uh, uh, or we put it before him. God's judgment was sure. Often we depend on the trappings of success. Expensive cars, pastimes, 
clothes and homes to give us fulfilment and they don't fulfill us. After a while, we're looking for something else to satisfy that need within us. You know, the only time we can have no true satisfaction in life is when we have Jesus Christ in our lives and we spend time and we develop that relationship with him. He says, I'll provide for, or God says, I'll provide for all your needs. But he's also, you know, he wants you to look to him because he is the provider. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that meets all our needs. But God says we will reap grief and pain if we have depended on temporary things to give us eternal security. If we don't want the same treatment Damascus received, we must turn from these false allurements and trust in God. We pray in, in the Lord's Prayer and the Disciples' Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah? That's all we need, really, is our basic needs met. You know, um, there's a song, a Disney movie, and it's um, the song of uh, uh, Baloo, the bear. That's all you need is the simple bare necessities of life. You know, it might be a funny song, but when you think, you know, once we get those basic needs met, we only need, we don't need much, really. We need clothes, we need warmth, and roof over our head. But what we can be lacking more than anything else is lacking the presence of God. And this year we need to seek God more, with all our heart, soul and strength. Because he's the only one who satisfies that deep longing with all of us, that we all have, that emptiness. And he's the only one who can fill it. Things cannot, they're only temporary. If we don't want the same treatment Damascus received, we must turn from these false allurements and trust in the Lord. Yeah. Verse 8. Many of the images were of Ash, uh, Asherah, or Ashtara, a Canaanite goddess of the sea, often considered the female counterpart of Baal. Also, this can be the Queen of Heaven, as they call it, and, you know, where, where you get Mary worship and stuff like that. But, you know, the, the church has replaced some of these things with, you know, instead of worshipping Queen, you know, or the counterpart, Ashton or not, we worship Mary now, and the mother and child and all those things, you know. I'm just making comments here. If you need to, you need to study that deeper for yourselves, don't take everything I say. But we have to be very careful that we're not putting other things in in God's place. It's only God we should worship. Nobody else. We should only pray to God and no one else. Queen Jezebel may have brought the worship of Asherah into the northern kingdom. The cult encouraged immoral, se immoral sexual practices. And this attracts people, you know, satisfying their fleshly lusts. And as we looked at material things, you know, sex can become... Uh, a way of fulfilling that empty longing within our life but after the act there's an emptiness if you're not committing you know you're, you're not having sex within marriage there is no real satisfaction you look on to the next conquest the next experience but with God you know he can supply all those needs the Bible warns against worshipping Asherah Asherim or in groves in Exodus 34, verse 13, Deuteronomy 12, 3, and <coughs> chapter 16, 21 of Deuteronomy. And Manasseh, one of the most wicked kings of, of all together, was condemned for putting up an idol, the most likely of her in the temple. Another abomination that brings desolation, putting an idol in the middle of God's temple instead of putting God first in his temple. You know, and realising that word, word temple, I think, keep going back and thinking, well, we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And what we put up in our temple, what we see, what we hear, what we act and what we say, is it a reflection on the good things of God or is it a reflection on our sinful nature inside? You know, 
we are God's temple and we must make sure what we put in that temple is God's word. God's word is truth. We need to do this. We need to study his word so we can grow and develop. And we can be careful about, you know, that we don't fall into a sexual sin or immorality of any sort. You know, images of Asherah are no problem in our world. There are. They're set up. They're, you know, they, you can be seen in today's day and age. These statues and things. But religion, religion burst on sexuality is. You know, everybody says, oh, it's okay, you know, you can sleep with as many partners as you like. You know, but, uh, you know, it's the same thing. Media and entertainment. Oh, hang on, let's go. I've jumped a bit. Images of Asherah are no problem in our world. I mean, we see it in front of us all the, day, all the time. You can see it on the TV. Sex. Drugs and, uh, you know, and everything else. It's there in front of us. But a religion based on sexuality is, and most people are, are their religion is sex. Yeah. Pornography has become an addiction for many people. Media and entertainment industries feed our social society's obsession with sex. The runaway desire for stimulation and gratification often comes from an empty, lonely heart. Yep, yeah, that's very true. You think you're satisfying a need, but it's only temporary because of loneliness. We need a relationship with God, which is more important. God offers real joy and lasting love. The act of sex isn't love, well, unless it's in within a marriage relationship. But, you know... God wants us to give us lasting joy and lasting love, and he's the only one who can satisfy that. Be on the alert of for how many sexual images divert us from God. Yeah, it's easy, isn't it? You see somebody attractive and you think, oh, wow, look at that person, and your thoughts lead on and on and on into worse things. Be alert, be aware. When you see something, a poster or an advert on the TV, shut it off. Shut it off. Because what, you know, you're feeding. You're feeding yourself. You're feeding on these things. And all we needed is to feed on God and his word. And that's what's most important. Let's continue now. Prophecy against Ethiopia. Water the land of shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the earth, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled, all ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see, when he lifteth up an ensign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. For so the Lord said unto me, I will take my rest, I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs, and like a cloud of dew in the heart, heat of harvest. For afore the harvest, when the bud is perfect, and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth. And the fowls shall summer upon it, and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. In that time shall the, the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts, of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden underfoot, whose land the rivers have spoiled to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. You know, yeah, there's a lot in that about pruning, cutting off the bad stuff, and, you know, let's read on in the notes in my life application Bible. This prophecy, verse 1, was probably given in the days of, the he of Hezekiah, 2 Kings 19 to 20, chapter 19 to chapter 20. 
the Ethiopian king had heard that Assyria's great army was marching south towards them. He sent a messengers up the Nile asking the surrounding nations to form an alliance. Judah was also asked, but Isaiah told the messenger to return home because Judah needed only God's help to repel the Assyrians. Right? Isaiah prophesied that Assyria would be destroyed at the proper time. Think of that sometimes. We look for help from other people. You know, we've got a problem in our lives. Our first, prior, first thing was, oh, I've got to share that with somebody and see what they think and how they can advise and help. But God would prefer us to turn to him first with our problems. Yes, he may use a man or a woman or a circumstance or a principle or a, something from the word to give us direction. But how he does it is up to him. But our first priority must be to turn to him first and ask him for his help and his guidance. Not like like Ethiopia was doing and trying to get an alliance between other, all the kingdoms to fight against Assyria. Even he went to Judah, but, you know, we must uh, turn to God first, ask him first. How do we sort this problem out, Lord? You are the one, and so many of us fail. We try and work everything out ourselves. You know, God wants us to put our trust completely in him, because he was the one that will help us through. Verse 3. This is a call to all nations to watch for the signal of the fall of Ethiopia. Isaiah was saying, Ethiopia is going to fall. Ethiopia had been summoning other nations to join an alliance against Assyria. We will see a bit more in 20 verse 1 to 6. God would stop Assyria in its attempt to overtake the world. So God also uses the armies to attack and to, you know, destroy. He uses even people who are not gods to bring about his purposes. We've studied that. We've looked at that many times when we studied the prophets. And God can use a circumstance to bring people back to himself. I believe God can use COVID-19 to bring his people back, to find out who is truly his, those who are truly following him, those who turn to him in these difficult times. We must look at these things. We must ask God to direct us so that we make the right responses. We make the right decisions in a, in a, in a pandemic situation like today that we're experiencing. We can only turn to God to meet that need. We can try all these other things, but ultimately it's God we must turn to. It's God we must trust. In God we trust. That's a motto, isn't it? Was it the Salvation Army or something like that? But I mean, whatever it, whatever it is, in God we trust. Are we trusting in God today to meet the needs that we have, to satisfy the dog in the desires of our hearts? Or are we looking here than everyone else? If there's a problem, who do we run to? Do we run to other people first? And God second? No, God is asking us to put our trust in him today, to look to him, and he will satisfy the longings of our hearts. He will give us the direction and the guidance that we need only if we trust in him and his word, because his word never fails. So, I call that, that's the end of today's short message. Two chapters of Isaiah. Let's get back into the word of God. I don't know what your... Um, if you had made resolutions this year, but mine is to read even more of the Word of God to, this year, to meditate more on Him this year, to seek Him with all my heart, soul and strength, and that should be all of our desires, because God says He will meet our needs. And He always have. He's never left me hungry. He's never left me without. He's always come through, even sometimes at the last minute. But God always meets the needs. So he's teaching us to put our confidence in him. Don't put your confidence in man. Put your confidence in God. Lord, I thank you for your word to us today. That, Lord, we do not look from the right or to the left, Lord. Everything we need is in you, Lord. And if we put our trust in you, Lord, you will meet all our needs. Lord, you will satisfy the longings and the cravings that we may have. If we trust in you and we don't look... 
to other things, Lord, and help us, Lord, as we uh, wait upon you, that, uh, you know, we don't go running out with our problems straight away to our best friend or somebody else. We first bring our, prom our troubles to you. Cast all your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you, the word says, doesn't it? You know, there's so many scriptures saying, Lord, if we put our trust in you, not to put our confidence in man, because man will always fail, but God never fails. So help this word as it goes out today that to be a blessing to someone that we continue to put our whole trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, all of you, for following this uh, broadcast on uh, YouTube. I pray God's blessing over you. If you've enjoyed today, please uh, like and share it with others so more people will hear the God, the good news of God and Jesus Christ. Because even though we're going through dark and difficult times, his word satisfies. None but Christ can satisfy. None other name but his. For love and life and lasting joy, Lord Jesus, are found in you. Remember that song? For those of you who are older, you know we need to put our trust in him. So please share. Please have a good day. God bless you. Keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you his shalom is perfect everlasting peace. Amen.